Don't let this plant size fool you. It's a bonsai dawn redwood, a Chinese cousin of America's giant sequoias. And it's from these tiny cones that the mighty California redwoods grow. Our redwoods are rooted in history, but what about their future? Our cover story is reported by Lee Cowan. Deep in one of California's few remaining old growth forests sat an oddity, popular with tourists since the 1880s. A giant sequoia, so giant, a tunnel was carved in its trunk. Last year, that tree toppled over in a storm. It was estimated to be around 1,000 years old. It and other trees like it in the redwood family are a testament to how much we are fascinated by these ancient evergreens, but it's also a reminder of just how much we've abused them. Looked like the redwoods were a limitless resource that we could never possibly cut all of them down, and we needed those for houses and lumber camps and mine shaft tunnel shore up poles or everything. It seemed like a limitless resource. Alex Taboni is a ranger at the very first state park in California, Big Basin Redwoods State Park, about 65 miles south of San Francisco. It's been a park since 1902, ever since a photographer named Andrew P. Hill led the first of its kind conservation charge to protect giants like this one, what's now called the father of the forest tree. It was probably only gonna be another six months to a year before all of these old growth trees that we're standing in right now would have been gone. It was that close. That close. While those trees were saved, other old growth groves were not so lucky. In a 1965 CBS News documentary, our own Charles Corral reported on the rush to turn some of the last remaining redwood forest either into lumber or to clear them out of the way to make room for a highway. A hundred years ago, the great original redwood forest covered two million acres along the California coast. But more than two-thirds of the virgin redwood trees are gone. Their loss was lamented even then. The more you can preserve of this, the better. I, I don't think that the world needs any more freeways. I think you, pretty soon you're just going to end up with a bunch of roads with no place to go on them. The final tally, 95% of California's original redwood forest was logged, wiped clean, leaving only giant stumps as reminders of what had stood here for so long. And it's not as if the threat is entirely over. Even today, only about a quarter of the coast redwood habitat is protected from commercial logging and development. That said, those that remain stand as cathedrals of nature. Some have been here long before Columbus landed in the Americas and tower some 30 stories tall. Yes, that's a grown person being dwarfed by that massive trunk. What's it like when you're here and you see someone that's never been in a redwood forest before to come in and see them? <laughs> that's the best. That is the best. What do they say? Usually it's something along the lines of, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Hodder is president and CEO of the nonprofit Save the Redwoods League. The scientists believe that Its founders started buying up forest land 100 years ago, but much of it is younger forests that aren't maturing as big or as fast as some conservationists would like to see. And these, what do you think, 50, 60 years old? So they're just babies, really. These are just babies. These are just babies. Wow. We're working with redwood forests that have been clear cut multiple times and are growing back with such a density of stems that they're crowding each other out. It becomes a thicket of spindly trees that don't get enough sunlight, that don't get enough water. There's just too much competition. There's too much competition. So there's a subtle shift underway from forest conservation to forest restoration, which includes one idea that may have you scratching your heads, logging. Over the next five years, Save the Redwoods League will be working to thin over 10,000 acres of smaller trees in order to give the remaining redwoods more space, more nutrients, and more light in order to grow faster. Just like in a garden, where you prune to accelerate the growth of the dominant plants, you need to thin. 
But figuring out which of these precious trees stay and which ones go is no easy decision. We treat all the trees like they're the same, but they're really, really not. Save the Redwoods League scientist Emily Burns, along with University of California Davis professor David Neal, are trying to unlock the genetic secrets of some of the oldest living things on the planet. So as old as they are and as iconic as they are, we don't really know that much about them, right? They're the strong, silent type. <laughs> and so we have to use science to help decode what's going on with these trees. Last year, in two labs, one at UC Davis, the other at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, they began the complex task of mapping the redwood genome to uncover nature's blueprint that is as unique to every tree as our own genetic makeup is to us. You have to have a parts list to understand whether anything is the same or different than it was before. The parts list for Redwood did not exist. It's a daunting task, though. Yeah, it, we won't be able to do it overnight. You know, <laughs> it'll take a few years, but it's achievable. We as humans have three billion pairs of DNA. Pretty complicated. But the Coast Redwood has some 30 billion base pairs. But I thought we were the most complex organisms on Earth. Well, no, that, you should rethink that. <laughs> <laughs> I see probably two or three that look pretty good. It all starts with the redwoods cones and the seeds embedded in them, high up in the canopy. Yep, someone has to make their way all the way up there and pluck them off by hand. So you're climbing two, 300 feet in the air? Not me, um, <laughs> but I would like to. It's from the seeds where the DNA is extracted, one scalpel cut at a time. There it goes. Millions of little pieces of DNA, the chemical building blocks of life, are all sequenced and then fed into a powerful computer. Basically, you take a, you know, a puzzle and throw it on the floor, and now you have to put it back together. The $2.6 million project has been funded by mostly private donations. When it's done, scientists will have mapped enough of the genome in enough trees to help identify the kinds that are most resilient and likely to live a nice long life. Within 100 years, we absolutely can set these forests on a healthy trajectory where they have many of the characteristics we're looking for in old growth. Call it a nurturing nudge from science, all to save what John Steinbeck once called ambassadors from another time when so much of the conversation today is about what we've lost, the, the damming of the world's waterways, the receding glaciers, we have in the redwood forest a sense of hope. And we can truly leave the world better than we found it.